Hello and welcome to Know Your Company, a special show on NDTV Profit. The show takes you into the shop floor and interacts with the management to give you an insight into the company. Today we are at the Cochin shipyard and behind me is the majestic indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant, which was built by Cochin shipyard. We'll discuss this and more and the future plans of Cochin shipyard with the chairman and managing director of the company Madhu Nair. Cochin shipyard incorporated in 1972 was one of the first civilian shipyards to be selected by the government to make indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant. It is one of the only shipyards in the country with a dry dock facility that can be used for the construction of large naval ships like the aircraft carrier. The Kerala headquartered shipyard has primarily two functions, shipbuilding and ship repairs. It has five facilities in the country at Udupi, Port Blair, Mumbai and Hooghly. The major shipbuilding is undertaken in Cochin where it executes a large portion of its 22,000 crore order book which consists of eight corvettes, three of which were recently launched and six next generation Warcraft ships. The company also recently undertook a capex program to construct a new dry dock and international ship repair facility that will help augment its capacity and increase its execution speed. It is one of the only shipyards which undertakes construction of civilian ships and has orders from Norway and Germany. The company is also one of the major suppliers of vessels for inland water highways. It is also undertaking a pilot project to construct a vessel which will run on hydrogen in partnership with KPIT Technologies. I have with me Mr. Madhu Nair, Chairman and Managing Director of Cochin Shipyard. Mr. Nair, thank you very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. Uh, my first question to you, in 2009, you were just a civilian shipyard. How did you bag the first indigenous uh, aircraft carrier order? See, in 2009, uh, when, the, when the Indian Navy and the country was looking at investing in the next large vessel, the aircraft carrier in India at that point of time, they had done a lot of due diligence. The system had done a lot of due diligence. And as far as coaching shipyard was concerned, we had facilities, so capacities, let's put it that way. We were already doing large vessel construction and we were also doing pretty complex vessels. So from a capability point of view and capacity point of view, when the Navy was scouting for a shipyard, ours was the only shipyard which would fit the bill from both this angle. And uh, I think there was a general confidence. The general confidence was good because the general confidence also came from the fact that CSL had a lot of experience on the aircraft carrier side on our ship refit side. We were the only shipyard which had done uh, ship refits. So ship refits, naval vessel uh, refits, all were there. But yes, there was always this nagging doubt. This is, the, this is a yard which has not done a naval vessel. But I thought I should actually say yeah, that. Yeah, but because you were you were the only civilian shipyard, and others were the different shipyards. Correct, correct. So, so straight away, straight away, capacity was one thing, but I think I think you should give the credit to the system and the people uh, holding it at that point of time, both in the shipyard and within the within the defense establishment, who had confidence that yes, together we can do this in coaching shipyard. You know? so, so it was it, also that's, that's capac capacity building for you in, in some sense because it was new to you. Uh, air fire, aircraft carrier by themselves is very complex in nature so uh, and you took some time in this because to, from 2009 to really uh, 22 uh, and you had a like, COVID See, also coming in between so that also capacity impacted. building yes I, I, I should say that there's been for the country for the system it's been steep learning there is no doubt about that but there were there were facets and there were components which was all around. But the most important part is see, when, you, when you're talking the size and scale of an aircraft carrier, which not many countries have actually done, the size and scale is what makes a difference. Many a times the capabilities and capacities you may be able to integrate, but not on, for example, say when you, when you do a, a high-end destroyer, there are, there are still good level of complexities. But a carrier probably would be multiplied by seven to ten times kind of integration complexities and when when you have a lot of things working around you know one error one mistake one planning uh, interface not being looked at could cascade into others so this was the greatest problem and not just for the shipyard for the navy the shipyard 
the the major uh, vendors involved for everyone we are learning together Th that doesn't mean that you are all doing those specializations for the first time many had actually done those specializations but working for example it's like putting in the best people together and make them work as a team you know so, so that kind of a thing so the learning has been steep there is no doubt about it you know it was uh, what 276% indigenous content uh, in the aircraft carrier and uh, and many was uh, i think some of the electronics and others were only from uh, what imported yeah, right uh, approximately 76% indian content and uh, certain uh, both on the mechanical side there are there are certain other solutions which are imported certain are imported through high end indian companies so that the the transition is also there but 76% indian content uh, you know there's always this talk over the second iac being built uh, uh, ines fishal i think if I, that that's a name which is floating around and it seems that you are the only contender here because of the expertise that you have done in the last few years uh, to back that as and when it comes i i, I see there, there there has been a heightened discussion on this and and i, I can say like to so the indian navy the ministry of defense due to the larger considerations have always been talking about further aircraft carriers for the country now whether we are the only contender kind of a thing as i would from the shipyard point of view i would definitely say like the kind of aircraft carrier experience last 30 years it's not just vikram as i said both ins virat and vikram aditya refits see refits on a carrier is also not small so for example somebody who had docked a carrier in india it's only kochi shipyard we have got 50 people like me we have all crawled in aircraft carriers during the refit the point of time so the kind of interface capital ship interface uh, and again between the navy between kochi shipyard our engineers the kind of strengths we have built up engineering strengths detailed system strengths i would think it's it's practically kochi shipyard at the end of the day so and i'm sure that uh, this is uh, being discussed i would i would be extremely happy that uh, this is decided at the earliest because uh, vikrant coming out and uh, the entire uh, system the entire fraternity navy seeing this one and odd years now in operation and the kind of good feel it has given i think the confidence level is very strong there are various other factors also so the the, the larger thought process there's a lot of skill sets and knowledge that's been developed within the organization in kochi shipyard within within a framework within the indian navy within our sub vendors like say bharat electronics lozen and tobro bhl now all this in in it should be captured back in a short time and then it would be best we do it fastest and i think this is also understood very well within the defense establishment and from what we see in the how how long will it take for you if you get the order maybe today uh means in the past it was a learning phase so it was uh, it took you some time when you talk about an order that may come in uh, today for an another aic uh, aircraft carrier how long will you take to complete it i see there there is something like uh, th this all depends on what kind of aircraft carrier we are talking uh, the the large take which we understand is the general the uh, view is that uh, the country must go for more of a repeat from a platform point of view and and appropriate technological and uh, evolutionary changes so from that point i have gone on record many times and said it's somewhere around 8ish to 10 years kind of a thing but this all depends on because you can't you can't talk something unless you know what you're going to build you know but uh, gut feel is what i'm saying so that gut feel is floating around but uh, to talk more specifics you would need uh, to understand how exactly things would be uh, ironed out so you completed 50 years last year uh, in that 50 years you have transformed yourself from not only being a commercial ship builder to a defense ship builder as well and from within that uh, ship repair and ship building yeah. each of them have it so there are four verticals yeah, for correct, you in there correct. Uh, how do you see this entire verticals moving going forward in terms of growth you are you are right we we actually not many people are very clearly aware of this we are we are in ship repair and we are in ship building and within both we are in commercial 
and the defense space. Uh, it would fluctuate. The, the revenues would fluctuate across these four verticals. But we see strength in all four verticals. And uh, defense, it's been Indian. We have not, till now, we have not looked at anything outside because it's really not been, there's been enough drive from India. As we are speaking uh, today with eight ASW Corvettes and six NGMBs, we have 14 high-end vessels to go on the new building side. Refit the defense part, various things are going very strong, including a recent uh, new uh, I mean, large yes, BC. IRSBS, yes. exactly, yeah. the re-engineering works, yeah. because it's a different uh, model. So defense is going strong. Ship uh, repairs on the commercial side, the shipbuilding side, the European, the emerging new tech, green tech part, we are seeing strong traction over there. So that traction is looking good. And we, we hope, again, I, I am very positive about not just Cochin Shped, I am seeing this positivity in India. Suddenly there is this various stars are aligning or let me say the geopolitical stars are also uh, aligning. That's evident in your stock price as well, right? It, it has to, because India, I always say, we, we probably missed the last manufacturing bus, but there's a new bus, there's a new found positivity in India, the young India, the government, I think I think everything is going good. And if if this momentum can be sustained, then that momentum is very important because we all we all work under passion. There's a there's a momentum, there's a if the if the if the world also connects and the world is connecting at this point of time, then that green ship I, I put it under that large umbrella, the green ship tracking. Uh advanced technologies, this transition. The we fuel do a couple transition. of them for the German, for, for have, the European, no the German, no, uh, wants, uh, we, are, we are doing the first fuel cell uh, container vessel for a European company. We are, we are picked in uh, wind service vessels for a German uh, company. So this looks good and we are talking with various others. So that part is looking strong. On the ship repair side, again, we are seeing strength. Again, uh, for us, it's peaking at the right time because uh, Two of our large expansion projects, on which one, the ISRF in Kochi, is a purely dedicated ship repair uh, system. That gets completed by end of this year. Full-blown operations will be another four or five months down the line. So that's coming up. And uh, the government of India is very keen, Honorable Prime Minister's vision of having maritime clusters in the country. We are happy that we have been able to front it, both from Kochi and from Mumbai, and certain other places which I can't talk today, but on the West Coast, where we are trying to develop something. So this ship repair cluster would also drive because, again, as a company, we feel very strongly about ship repair and the kind of growth it can bring into the segment in India. That's also a growth segment for you, right? In right. the sense, it has it is the highest margin business for you in that sense. So you have Mumbai, you have Udupi, and you have Cochin. Correct. And within Cochin, you have the internet to ship repair facility, which is which is coming up, and the new dry dock, which is also coming up, which is dual purpose, ship building as correct, well as correct. ship uh, ship repair. How big is the ship repairing uh, opportunity for you? You've been telling, talking to analysts, and you've been telling that you know the short term, two to three or four years, you look at 200, 1200 crores coming correct, from there. Correct. But uh, is it going to be as easy uh, because? Are we seeing? See, uh, when I when I say that 1200 crore of our ISRF will come into play, Mumbai and uh, Calcutta, we have struggled a little bit, but stabilizing. So 1200 looks attainable within that. As I have been talking, another another two and a half three years kind of a framework. The next step would be 1500, but the full blown step could be much more. You can multiply it by one and a half two. Mr. Nair, uh you are sitting on a order book of 22,000 odd crores. Uh, what is the kind of uh, outlook that you have on this order book? How many years will it take for you to complete that? And what kind of order pipeline that you're looking at? See, the 22,000 crore order book, about 15,000 crores of that are two naval projects. These are the ASW Corvettes, eight numbers, and six next generation missile vessels. This roughly give it I, I'm, I'm just putting it across six to seven years for this part to get completed. The balance is uh, our uh, commercial orders, as I mm. was mentioning, the, the European short sea yeah. vessels and the green vessels. Those are all and a large dredger for uh, DCI. 
these are all give it around the uh, next four years three to four years deliveries to come in actually mid of next year onwards getting all the way into the next 36 to 48 months so this is a flavor because uh, the defense vessels would be a bit more longer the series is also longer yeah. And the the AW ones is that these these, these are the, three are the, ones, these three are the ones, first three ones, getting right? launched, uh, getting the dock getting flooded for uh, tomorrow's uh, launch, and it's a, it's a very momentous occasion for the Indian Navy and for Kochi Shipyard. Three vessels at one go. One go. Yeah. And by by when will these vessels be completed? The first vessel is end of twenty four uh, delivery, and thereafter six month is the interval between vessels. But the initial vessels, we may be able to all going well. We may be able to do it much faster than this. And as you increase the number of ships, uh, as you launch and uh, you know complete them, uh, the shipments and refitments also come to you, right? In that sense, um, the refits, yeah, are not necessarily. We we would have an added advantage on that. The navy is thinking of such a uh, scenario where they where they go to as as a what they One. call. Yeah, one lot kind of a thing, but that's not yet on. So right now the refits could go to any place, but we are we are one of the largest uh, refit yard, what the Navy calls offloaded refits. In other words, they do it in their own uh, naval dockyards. So the offloaded uh, refits, uh, we have been doing very strong. Must be about 300 projects till now. What is the kind of pipeline that you are sitting on? The defense is strong. It's a tender situation, so what comes we'll have to see. But otherwise, defense more how than big, how big is the value there in them? 20, 30, 40,000. You can say the, uh, the aircraft carrier would itself would be what 40? I, I don't want to uh, talk those figures, but I, I I wouldn't refute what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> kind of <a> thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, but then there are other projects. Uh, the projects uh, because the navy is on a growth path. The non-defense uh, part. We are seeing easily 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. So it is not that we want everything, and we nobody, no yard would like to uh, fill the dock, say six or seven years down the line with a commercial vessel. You 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 want to make sure you are agile enough that you always have. I would be happy if we have four four and a half years kind of a order book on the Cycling on the, every year. Correct, correct. Because then you are catching the market and you are you are moving sure. On the naval, we would look longer. Term. Uh, what six to ten years? That kind of stuff. Six to six to seven, eight six. years, kind of a thing. Because uh, see, as we are all aware, there are two parts to this. You know, one is the commodity parts and other things. The other one is the equipment part. How do you manage the commodity risk? See, commodity on a defense vessel is much more easily handleable for a vessel of this type because uh, the steel or other things. See, even if it varies, the that part is lower. Okay. It's the equipment part which needs to be handled carefully, and with uh, foreign exchange variation, if you have imports, luckily and thankfully, we are we are into strong indigenization mode. But even within that indigenization mode, maybe there is a foreign component because mm. I don't think we can aspire for a hundred percent uh, shortly. But uh, so this is something which we'll have to handle. So what we typically do is we try to again enter into long-term contracts where things are fixed. And uh, defense contracts, the latest DAP contracts, provides for the forex variations also. Mm -hmm. So, so there is there is a method. For the commercial part, what we do is uh, large ships. Yes, steel price fluctuation, a hundred dollar, two hundred dollar. I can take a fifty dollar fluctuation. I can take that side, this side. That's where experience comes. But but if the market goes up by four hundred dollars a ton or something, then I think we have a problem. Do you do a long-term supply agreement in no, place? We, no, we do we do case by case. But uh, these or days it's project. hundred percent. It's not we club projects if okay. it's possible. It's hundred percent Indian steel. So we we go for uh, JSP, JSW, ArcelorMittal, and that's that's looking good. Even though as we and all of them have been able to be, uh, oh, build a different grade. Uh, excellent, steel. Ex everything, everything, excellent quality steel. Uh, you know. The Indian defense shipyard industry between you, uh, Mazagon, Garden B. Yeah. Uh, do you see enough orders coming in uh, in the next ten years for on the, the on, visibility part on, of on the defense talking. side? On the defense side, I feel uh, it could be generally good. See, the whole thing is everybody. See, there are there are projects which are smaller vessels added up to certain larger numbers. There are these larger 
projects, you know. Yeah. So, see, the larger projects comes in lumps. It's not that the Indian Navy can go and order. So, naturally, people are talking about the submarines. Because it has to go through the budget as well, right? It has so to go through the budget. It's to go through uh, capacities, capabilities. So, uh, but generally, if you're... A general picture would be next 10 years, India, our growth path, what we are seeing, our states are in the world. I, I, I think things should be good. Things should be good. What is the kind of kind of order book orders that can come in and flow in just to get an idea of how big uh, could See, be this are, industry? We are, we, are, we are talking on potential aircraft carrier. We have always been seeing about the P-75I yeah. submarines yeah. where we are not involved. But, yeah. but that could be what, 60, 70,000 That's 000 interesting crores. because that's the only place you are not there. I mean, all other warship. Is it a conscious call not to go into that? See, we we definitely did take a look at it, but we also realized that uh, that was not the aspiration for the country. And rightfully, see, as a, as a business, I would naturally try to take a knock at practically everything. But uh, you look at any country in the world, submarines don't get built by multiple companies because there's huge expertise. And today, that kind of expertise, there are two large organizations in India and a third, which I don't want to talk, but there are three large pockets of knowledge. I, I think we would be keen on a refit possible because we feel we are very strong in, in, in the, in the and refit your, side. And your dogs can manage refit we for can, We can, we can, we can. But then, but then that's not been our core focus because uh, the, the country has actually positioned it in a particular fashion and we respect that. We, see, it is not that everybody can get into everything, you know, so mm -hmm. there must be, and uh, again, again, when I'm talking about coaching Spirit, first and foremost, we, we are, we are an Indian company, you know, so we, we do respect and understand and if we can position appropriately, as we say, for example, I, I, you asked me that question, I feel we are, we are an out and out aircraft carrier company. That I would definitely like to see that ex experience, excellence. And it's not just in Cochin Square. It is, it is that larger ecosystem around Cochin Square. Similarly, if somebody is doing good on submarines, why not? That kind of a thing. That's why we, we had a hard look at it. Uh, but then it wouldn't fit the requirements. And the capital required would be much more in that sense? Uh, see, we are building a new dry dock. That dry dock can take a submarine also. Hmm. Uh, so, it was not coming from the cap, uh, capital point of view. It was coming from the strategic intent. Strategic intent point of view. Uh, how, what about the CapEx finally? Uh, you know, you've been doing CapEx for the last yeah. couple of years. Uh, your uh, international uh, ship repair yeah. and then dry, new dry rock all are going to come in by 24, 25. Yeah. Uh, will you require more CapEx going forward? See, what we have done is like uh, the two projects which you said, the new dry dock and the ISRF. These together are about 2,800 crores. In addition, we invested in a new shipyard in Kolkata, about 200-ish. We bought a shipyard in Udupi, a hundred and odd kind of investment. And then within the company, within software solutions, within uh, various strategic things. So roughly we are invested about 3,500 crores. And we were doing this when our net worth was around 2,400, 2,500 crores. More than now we are about 4,500 crores. So I thought we have shown the intent. We, everybody likes sitting on cash. I have brought in a view here that cash definitely is of interest, but cash, if it is invested back into business and you have the will and the intent, so we have come this far, CapEx heavy investments we have done. Going forward, your question whether we'll do CapEx heavy, ship repair, the right possibilities we would like to. Technology and investments, we would definitely like to have some money with us to look at the right opportunities. In something global also, we will be keen to look at. And we are, we are, as we are speaking, we are practically a debt-free company. Right, well, a couple of hundred crores. Basically. Small that bond that will get uh, uh, redeemed this year. Uh, so, what about the return? Uh, you know, your return on liquidity fell below ten percent. Uh, you see that now that the capex cycle is over for you and you are concentrating on higher margin business, that should go up again. See, return on equity is a little bit when a 
or ROSI, if you are talking about ROSI, like the kind of capital we are deploying, because these are capital heavy industries. So, for example, a dry dock when we are investing. It is not that see, people bring in the parameters of asset turnover and other things. That may not work directly if you are looking at that standalone. We have a part of the shipyard which is beaten down because we have continuously kept investing, but that part is beaten down. So, on an on a overall point of view, things should improve a little bit more, but I wouldn't really be too bothered about the ROC, the ROE part, while the markets may be extremely dicey about it. Business point of view, we look at the top line and the bottom line. The top line growth, I have always been saying, I would be happy if I can do a steady state 12% year on year. I'd be happy if I can beat it a little bit good, but otherwise 12% year on year. And a margin level as what we had discussed earlier, if you can hold on to those margin levels, then I think we have reason to invest and create these businesses. Because at the end of the day, uh, this is not an industry, and we are actually creating an industry which is not for EC entry people. So, so we we are not looking at the next five years alone, and this is the, this is the toughest call people like us have. You want immediate things, and and you want all the all the uh, flamboyant things to be done. Sometimes we want to be below the radar, not talk too much. And then just use the word doing it silently. Yes, that is what we would actually like to do. So we normally don't do too many interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much yeah. for joining us today on Thanks a lot. Profit. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.